What's going on, guys? Uh, Big Mo here, uh, your host for Faith Fitness and French Toast. As you know, we are well into season five, and I am super, super pumped to welcome you to the Faith Fitness and French Toast YouTube channel. From now on, uh, we'll be doing our best to upload all podcasts in a video format as well up here on YouTube uh, so you can watch them all live. If you'd like to uh, continue watching them on Spotify, iTunes, and just listening while you drive in the car, by all means. But for those of you who have been asking, and it's been a decent amount uh, to launch video, I'm super pumped to bring it out to you guys. I'm still new to the whole YouTube game, so bear with me uh, as I kind of pick up the pieces and continue to improve. Uh, but with that, uh, let's jump right into the intro. I'm super pumped for this for y'all. Hello and welcome to Season 5 of Faith Fitness and French Toast. I'm your host, Moses Allwood. I want to warmly welcome you back to the podcast. The purpose of this podcast is and always has been simple. To empower, encourage, and inspire athletes of all walks of life in their strength endeavors, faith walk, and of course, their best options for post-workout, late-night meals, and breakfast. I'd like to thank our sponsors, Skull Smash Ammonia, Raw Grip Chalk, Croquet to Strength, and Primate Apparel for their consistent support and encouragement. With the best hard-hitting ammonia in the game, there's none better than Steve at Skull Smash. If you're looking to hit a brutal pull and need to add a grip, Raw Grip Liquid Chalk is the highest quality on the market right now. If you're looking for a no BS team, a team that's going to stand by you through all the ups and downs, shoot a DM over to the Croqueta Strength on Instagram and take some percentage off for supporting the podcast. And I'll swear by this, we are humble, but we are savage. Primate Apparel's mentality of sticking to your guns and standing up to those who do you ill is a vital part of my training. And you can head over to any of those Instagram pages to get some products. This evening, I have the pleasure of sitting down with an old friend, Alex Usler. Uh, he's the general manager for Hybrid Performance Method for a long time, an avid power lifter, a tatted up man, an entrepreneur at heart, and just a lover of all things strength. Over the course of the next hour, we chat about his upcoming ventures, Cold Mind Apparel, and Team Usler training, as well as reminiscing on some times uh, with Hybrid and looking at the future. You will notice halfway through my own video as the host will cut out. The interview continues as normal. If you're looking for audio experience only, you can head over to Spotify, iTunes, Google, Amazon, anything else to go check it out. With that, love y'all. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel to be in touch for everything coming up for Faith Fitness and French Toast. Big love. <clears throat> Alex, welcome to the show, brother. How you doing? I'm doing good, man. Life is, uh, life is good. Life is crazy ups and downs everything in between but we're out here man yeah you have had a hell of a last month we had the hybrid showdown last weekend seeing dan bell total in 2606 and john hack being a freak as he always is to you moving on from hybrid you're starting companies i mean how are you feeling you've got to be kind of feeling like there's just been a lot going on i'm good i'm I'm feeling good man it's it's been it's been a much more than a stressful last month this has kind of been this decision has been kind of weighing with me, I want to say, since about November, more mm -hmm. or less. It's always been something kind of in the back of my mind, being, a, you know, an entrepreneur by nature and being, you know, very much a go-getter. It's always been hard for me, you know, being in certain stages of my life, professionally at the previous gym I worked at, starting with a small role in hybrid and expanding. I'm someone who always wants to be able to do more, and mm -hmm. I get a lot of satisfaction out of the things that I do. So it's been a natural kind of evolution leading towards this. But ever since November, when this decision's kind of, you know, been on my mind and I've been uncertain and I've been back and forth and I've been very scared, you know, it's a very scary thing leaving a lot of financial security and a very large established company, you know, where I had a, a pretty secure future to kind of dive off into the unknown. And uh, that that's kind of where I'm at right now. You know, I, I officially made the decision, I'd say, um, you know, after weighing it back and forth, you know, unsure, no one really saw it coming at all, honestly. And as I really thought, you know, on, on February 1st is when I kind of sat down and I, you know, I decided to give my resignation and decide that February was going to be my last month. So the showdown was going to be my last shebang with hybrid and it's time to, to make a name for myself, you know? 
Yeah. And, and I mean, for, for those who are watching or, or listening, uh, if you're listening to the show right now, uh, this is also up on YouTube as well. So if you want to watch both our ugly mugs this whole time as well, you can switch over to that. But uh, for those that don't know, I mean, Alex and I have known each other for a while. Uh, hybrid was how I started powerlifting, and he's seen me since I was a very small, bleach blonde hair kid wandering around the Arnold. So you, you've had quite a journey. I'm 99% just as I have. sure when I started working for Hybrid, I'm pretty sure you were already a member. So yes. you were hybrid longer than I was. Yeah. Yes, I, I was. And, and, it, and it's surreal to look back. And realize, you know, back when it was, you know, the old facility and I feel like the team was completely different, you know, and we were just testing out before yeah. the app was even a thing. And so it's been wild seeing what you've been able to develop uh, alongside um, Hayden and the rest of the squad, uh, but even more so what you've got coming up. So before we jump into the exciting things about Cold Mind Apparel and, and Team Usler and everything else coming up, I don't want to spend too much time on history because I'm sure everybody's heard the classic story. But how in the world did you get involved uh, to even want to become this big of a name in powerlifting in the first place? I mean, it, it all, I talked about this in a podcast I did recently. It was all kind of an organic evolution, to be honest. You know, I, as a kid, everyone knows my whole long story, but, you know, I went from doing drugs and selling drugs into fitness practically overnight, you know? And uh, I knew from right when I stepped into that CrossFit gym and started doing it and I got helped from that, I knew that I wanted to help people in some kind of way, you mm -hmm. know, and um, that's where fitness kind of gave me that that pathway to be able to do it. And, you know, never did I ever think that I was going to be a big name, you know, but like I said, I was never let myself get complacent with where I was at, you know, mm -hmm. working in a small gym, having 300 followers on Instagram, just the people who I actually knew in my life and following people like Dan Green and, and you know, Brandon Lilly and all these people who I used to idolize and look up to, you know, never did I ever think that I'd get to the point where they'd be my friends and I'd have their phone number. You know yep. what I mean? Yeah. Um, I met, that was never in my plans, but staying complacent and, uh, and not growing uh, was also never in my plans. You know, I'd, I'd never allow myself to be like that. I'd see people around me like that all the time. And I'm just like, man, I'm, I'm just not that kind of person. And that's how, you know, a natural born evolution and, and, you know, people seeing, you know, my, my initiative got me connected, you know, with hybrid. I had known Stephanie Hayden. They worked out at my old gym. And when they decided to open the facility in Miami, you know, they knew I was just, I was very ambitious and I was a hard worker and I was just, you know, coaching classes all day. And they're like, Hey, come manage something, you know, be a manager instead of just a coach. You could still be a coach on your own time, but they put me in a position of authority, you know? Mm -hmm. And then, uh, just ultimately like what I, what I say is it's like, I was, I was extremely lucky. I was extremely lucky because that opened up so many doors for me you know, uh, getting to be involved with them and knowing them. And I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing right now if it wasn't for that step in my life, you know? Yeah. And, you know, you, you went on to get to have a bench session with Conor McGregor and host these huge meets, you know, the hybrid showdown. I mean, it, it's been wild. It has been a wild journey. And you even posted yeah. something recently, you know, that you're, you know, nine years sober. So first off, that's huge. Like, I'm so pumped for you on that. And you, even as you were talking Thank about you, that, you're man. like, I never would have thought that me, 16 year old, you know, I'm there, I got the big gauges going in and, and you're like, man, that I was going to end up, you know, being sponsored by certified Piedmontese and running one of the biggest gyms in the powerlifting industry. But here you are. And even just today of seeing a cold mind apparel and team useful are both broken a thousand followers in like less than a week. I mean, that there's a, there's a serious base that's supporting what you're doing. And that's gotta just be a great feeling in and of itself. It's exciting, man, because, you know, I have I had a lot of people on my team and a lot of people rooting for me to, you know, make this decision. But then, of course, you know, there's there's a fear aspect of things, you know, on my wife being a little concerned. She's like, I mean, come on. Like, are, are you being greedy? Like mm -hmm. you, you want more, 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 more. And it's like the more we talk through it and it's like it, it, it's not greed. It's just drive. It's yeah. just endless drive and, you know, not being able to be complacent with where I'm at. Cause a lot of people would look at me and, you know, they'd be like, Oh, well you have everything. And like, why do you need to change anything? It's because I just know that I can, I can accomplish more and continue to build more. And I'm super, super excited to be able to start doing that. You know? Yeah. 
Well, so last weekend we had the hybrid showdown, uh, huge turnout. This was the third one. Uh, and in that you've seen meets run, you've been, you know, in the judging, the coaching, the, the management of all that. And kind of in the background, we've kind of got Garrett fear kind of creating meets and figuring stuff out in the midst of the USAPL, apparently crashing and burning. What in the world is going on with competitions right now? And what, what is it looking like moving forward that we can move into? Well, all I know is it freaking blows that, you know, nationals is playing out how it's playing out because I coach two of the, uh, Two of the best, uh, one of my athletes, Gavin, he's going to be contention to potentially, he should podium as a 93. He'll win Junior Worlds as a 93. He's trying to go to Junior Worlds, still a junior. But he'll give uh, Keiko and a lot of these guys a run for their money as a 93, totaling over 1,900. And has contention to be, you know, at least on the podium, if not a national champion. And Mm -hmm. he doesn't have a freaking invite or a spot. And then I have Cayman Battle who right now is, is ranked number four all time, all time in IPF, every IPF uh, affiliate, USAPL, number four all time. And uh, get this, right? So he did qualify to get those first round invites, right? Mm-hmm. He did. He looked up in his email, didn't see it. I remind him a couple of days later, I'm like, yo, Cayman, you got registered, right? And he's like, yo, I, I didn't get an invite. I'm like, well, you should have. You're in the qualification people who should get an invite. And uh, he emails someone and they're like, check your spam folder. He checks his spam folder and it's in his spam. Mm. And now it's too late for him to register. Wow. Now they tell him he has to wait till March 1st. He's one of the best 105s to ever walk the, the, the earth. He's never competed at nationals. Guaranteed at least podium spot. Of course, we have Ashton, who's a freak. So the chances of him beating Ashton aren't great. But I'm come, I'm, I'm gunning for a silver medal for him at nationals, you know. And because it was in his spam folder and he didn't check it in time, he doesn't get a spot. It's so absurd. Lord knows that this system, everyone is pissed off with it, and everyone is sick of it, and the USAPL and their IPF and all their BS. And that just definitely gives a lot of opportunity for some of us other guys, you know. Yeah. Garrett is very affiliated with the USPA. I'm very affiliated with the WRPF and the WRPF is also wanting to get into some drug tested meats and stuff like that. Even Cayman has told me, he's like, man, you know, I'm sick of this. I go to these local meats and, you know, I win best, best lifter. And I got a little trophy like this when with, you know, with his total, he could be winning, you know, good money at these meats. So I think more and more, you know, even these tested lifters, uh, even a good friend of mine, Sean Noriega, we were talking the other day and he thinks that he's going to branch out and do some of these money meets this year because he's, he's sick of the BS. And yeah. I see that the direction that where it's kind of going. And a lot of these guys, these, these tested guys can compete against these untested guys. Yeah. And I think it would be pretty cool to see them all going head to head. Yeah, no, I think so too. And even like when I was in college, of course, most college teams are competing USAPL. They're going to do collegiate nationals. And so my senior year last year was the the first year we were taking the full team uh, to nationals. And so I was like, okay, cool. This is my one and only shot to compete at collegiate nationals before my total has to be 500 pounds heavier for me to go to raw Nats. And we're right. prepping for it. And COVID hits two weeks before nationals was going to happen. Now, a normal person or, or meet director would say, oh man, like this is completely out of everyone's control. These are college students for God's sake. Let's refund them. We'll reschedule it or redo it not the USAPL. And, you know, you've got these 18, 19, 20 year olds who ha- are probably never going to compete at a national or international competition again, which is why collegiate nationals exist in the first place who are now like, wow, like I just paid 300 something dollars for hotels, flights, everything, and nothing's coming back. Uh, and it was just, it was this long drawn out process where it's like, at what point can some people step up and run some drug tested stuff that isn't just robbing people blind and creating this paywall for powerlifting. That's already an expensive sport for people to be a part of in the first place. Yeah. I think a lot of it is generational and, uh, and you know, a lot of the, the USAPL and IPF, they're obviously much older individuals and um, you know, a lot of them are business driven because at the end of the day, USAPL is a business mm-hmm. and uh, 
I think it's just, there's just a mental disconnect, you know, and it's just a, a mental disconnect from the young to the old and things getting lost in between and, you know, them not, it just meant mentality. And I think that the only way it's going to change is if you, us young guys, we start taking over and we start doing things differently. And uh, I think that's the next step. Oh, I think we lost. Hold on. I'm not sure if you can hear me or not. I think I lost you there for about two seconds. You're back now. Let me type this in as an edit real fast. Cool. Uh, I lost you at us young guys, but go for it. Yeah, I mean, I think it's up to us young guys to come in and we start taking over and, you know, we start running things, you know, for the lifters and the way that we want to see things. Like that's ultimately like when I started doing the showdown, that was my thing. I was like, I'm doing powerlifting and I'm doing meets the way that I would like to be at a meet, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, 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 you know, when I was in Virginia, at least, uh, and of course still college, all USAPL, even that lifter Sabre, it was the same thing. He was like, how can I target a meet to make it enjoyable, not only for the lifter, but for coaches and for spectators. I mean, let's be honest, like powerlifting meets are like six hour events. Like, if I invite, I never invite someone to a meet because I'm like, I'm going to be on that platform for nine minutes of the next six hours, but they don't yeah. want to watch the other random guys. And so, well, his method was we're going to do smoke and strobe lights and everything. It made a nightmare as a lifter to compete. Cause I'm like blinded, but <laughs> but the same idea of like, what can we do to make this accessible and fun and enjoyable, you know, in, in the same way that people can enjoy uh, going to as much as I hate it, CrossFit competitions. They're more entertaining to watch because there's more yeah. going on than yeah. just somebody benching something off their chest and then getting upset when they get two red lights, you know? <laughs> I agree. So, you know, you kind of mentioned you've got, you know, you've got Cayman coming up, you've got all these other athletes who are all doing really, really well. But I'm sure over your time as a coach, you have seen plenty of athletes make mistakes over uh, exert themselves question you as a coach you've seen probably everything in the book that could have gone wrong and so i kind of put it in as a topic of like weight cuts overtraining, other mistakes along those lines what are some of these basic mistakes that you're seeing especially these young guys that if they were to know a little bit more about would probably boost them further up in their career so as far as how much of that I've seen, I'm very lucky and I'm fortunate that for the most part, my athletes, from the relationship that I pretty much force on them, they, you know, because I'm in constant communication with them. I'm all about building a relationship, building communication, building trust in each other. And uh, something that I think differentiates me a bit. And I feel like the majority of my athletes, it's like they don't do those things because I, the way that I carry myself and what I offer to them, it's, you know, I, I demand respect and the same way I give them respect, they give it back to me, you mm -hmm. know, and that's something that I'm very fortunate about. Um, but don't get me wrong, you know, every so often there's been that, that, that athlete who just, you know, fucks off and does whatever they want and right. uh, then they don't really last long, you know, like those are the people that aren't going to be around long, whether it's on my team or in the sport in general, you know. A lot of my athletes, they come to me and, you know, even if they're not trying to be, you know, uh, on the podium at nationals, they want to take their training seriously. They want to take this piece of their life very seriously. So they're going to do everything that they have to. Um, you know, I, uh, as far as overtraining, I think that that comes down to, you know, proper adequate coaching and being able to see that well before it's getting to that point, you know, um, and then when you're when you're when you're when you're, you're, you're experiencing those states of large amounts of fatigue, that's where it's like there's other factors that I can't always fully monitor. But as a coach, I try to monitor and make sure you know their sleep, their stress, you know their diet is everything is up to par. Like for example, me, all three of those things are non-existent in my life, hence right. why my training is practically non-existent. I'm hardly eating due to stress levels, and you know I, I'm uh, I'm hardly sleeping because I'm awake at night frigging out, and I'm stressed twenty four seven. So I know my training <laughs> is going to be way less than ideal right now, right. and I have those expectations, and I'm okay with that right now. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you know it's <laughs> it's funny you say that, you know, because I think 
of course this year has been stressful for everybody but i mean if you're if you're launching new companies and especially as you said you're coming from a place of complete financial stability i mean a very pre-organized everything set up like you know what you got i mean you really you rolled the dice and you're like man like i really fucking hope this pays off and it looks like it is which is great but it doesn't help the fact that you're still at night you're like man did i just did i fuck up like is this the right move yeah. and, and i'm someone with a decent amount of anxiety so the same like i totally can appreciate that and i think it's it's even helpful for people to hear that they're like because it's so easy to just you look at somebody on instagram and you're like okay they've got twenty thousand something followers they've got fifty thousand, whatever and just like forget they're human but that's the thing right. like everybody's fucking human like everybody goes to bed every night and wakes up in the morning and asks themselves man i have no idea what today's gonna look like but i'm gonna make the best of it and it sounds like that's exactly the spot you're in right now. And I think there's something special about that. There's something wonderful about that. It's like a yeah, new beginning. Yeah, but the best almost. thing that you can do, 100%, but the best thing you can do is just is just be proactive. When I feel myself like getting mentally into those spots and like pulling myself into that, I'm like, no, let me take a step forward. Let me let me put something in a, into play. Let me put something into action that's going to, you know, get me more towards my goals, you mm -hmm. know? And, uh, so it's like more and more, I've been sleeping much better at night. I'm getting my appetite back. Honestly, over like the last couple of days, the last week, as things are, you know, I, I was able, cause I, I had that after I made that decision, I was sitting with, you know, my decision and I knew that I had quit, but I hadn't told the world yet because, you know, I wanted to get some things ready to release. And, uh, and then of course, you know, I'd already made the decision. There's no going back. And I'm like, crap, what if the world's not receptive to these things that I'm going to do? And just seeing over this last week, since I made it an official on, you know, Monday, and since I made it Instagram official, right? <laughs> um, and now we're on Saturday, just seeing the overwhelming response of support, excitement from people, people wanting to join the team, uh, excited for just, and just knowing also that I only announced two small things yeah. of some huge, huge things that I have in the works, you know? So it, it's, it's, it's exciting. Now it's like, I feel like the fear is more and more uh, behind me because things are more and more real. And it's just, it's, it's awesome, man. It's awesome. Yeah. So well, the first thing I want to jump into is, is the team. We got the shirt on right now. You got the logo. I know it started out as Uslers Angels. You're moving into Team Usler. What, if people are hoping to get involved, if people are hoping to join the team, what are kind of the specs you're looking for? Who are you looking for? Who are you kindly not looking for and are pushing to other coaches what can people expect? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I've been, I've been coaching and writing individual, individual programs for people for about, about seven years now. Mm -hmm. um, I'd say since around 2014, 2015, you know, I've been working in a gym since 2012 when I started interning and the gym that I worked at was a CrossFit gym. And we had a lot of remote CrossFit athletes because we had a very big competitive CrossFit program. Uh, that people would follow. And again, this was before powerlifting had blown up. This was CrossFit was the, it was all the rage, you know, mm -hmm. and CrossFit made that segue for powerlifting, you know, same for Olympic weightlifting. So we had a lot of, you know, people interested in our competitive CrossFit program. You know, we had taken a team to the games in like 2015 or something like that. And I was at the CrossFit games. I was able to coach an assistant coach at the CrossFit games, which was amazing experience. And at that time I had coached a lot of CrossFit athletes um, in individual programming, literally helping them improve their gymnastics, their conditioning, like CrossFit is the hardest thing to program for because right. you have to be good at everything, right. you know? So I started by doing the hardest customized <laughs> programming you <laughs> right. can do because you can't fucking template that. Right. You can't like the coaches who are, say it's personalized, but they're really just giving you the same thing everyone else is doing. You can't do that. Because right. one athlete might be able to do 20 muscle ups. This one is still learning how to do a muscle up. This athlete needs to work on handstand pushups. This person, it's, it's complex. Right. So I feel like that background is what made me extremely attentive to how I program and making my programming extremely individualized. Mm -hmm. Around 2015, I started doing getting more and more into powerlifting and I had grew a powerlifting club at the facility that I worked at because I was over CrossFit personally and I had gotten to powerlifting around 2014, was following Brandon Lilly's The Cube Method and stuff like that. Started having my team follow The Cube Method and that's when I'm like, I need to start writing my own programming. So I start reading books more on, on powerlifting programming besides just formal CrossFit programming, which is what I've been doing for so long. And, you know, started getting out of that norm of CrossFit and getting more into the strength world. And uh, 
it was a natural evolution from there. When I started working for hybrid, I started having my coaching taking a little bit of a back seat, right? My, I was stretched in a lot of other directions with other things that I was doing. And uh, I, I, less, I more and more got involved with the business side of uh, the fitness industry and less and less with the coaching side. I still always had some of my athletes and some of my team, um, but I always kept it uh, a, a little more minimal. And there was even for a while there that, you know, the majority of people, I, I was never, there was never a time that I was taking on athletes. I would, it was a selection process. Yeah. For a while there, I was really only you know, taking on like experienced athletes and, you know, more higher level athletes because there's less developmental phase and it, it's, 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 they're easier to coach and more yeah. receptive because they're already athletes. Um, so now ultimately over the last year or so, I, I expanded my horizons outside of that, was taking on people mainly through word of mouth, like friends of my athletes, people who I knew would be a good fit for the team, people who knew me because of hybrid and had followed hybrid's programming for years. They followed hybrid powerlifting. I wrote a bunch of hybrid powerlifting. I know their athletic history. Let's take things to the next level. Yeah. You know, so a lot of my clients were just like ex hybrid clients or people who, you know, did powerlifting, hybrid powerlifting, loved it, want to take it to the next level. So ultimately, where are we now? I am, I'm taking it back to my roots. I'm, I'm opening up to everyone. I'm excited to, you know, develop athletes from the ground up. Over the last week, I've had a lot of people reach out to me and a lot of people express interest. And, you know, ultimately, anyone's welcome to be part of the team, whether their goals are just general strength and conditioning whether it's competing in a high level of powerlifting, whether it's competing in Olympic weightlifting. I've coached tons of people through Olympic weightlifting as well. So uh, really anyone can be part of the team. Yeah, and that's exciting too because I know I – mean, we even talked a little bit, I remember a couple of years ago because I had first reached out. I was like, man, like, what does your coaching look like? And you were always, hey, I want to be as locked in on what's happening at any given moment as possible. You know, if your goal of creating relationships,